Now that we understand what a CMAF media segment is, let's see how the segment process on the origin packager will participate in this 28 seconds latency. As we have seen before, the packager will receive the continuous stream of video frames from the encoder and put them in the MDAT box during the segment creation. Once all six seconds of content is available, the packager fills the move table, adding the HTTP header, and finally making the segment available to the network. So it took six seconds for that segment to be sent out. So more generally, we can say that the origin packager introduces a latency equal to the duration of the segments they produce. Now let's travel all the way downstream the delivery chain and take a look at how players would prefer these media segments. In this example, the player makes sure that at all times, three full media segments or 18 seconds worth of video content are available in this media buffer. And this is precisely the amount of time the player gets to react to a possible degradation of bandwidth to then request a lower profile and keep the channel running. Yeah, that's true. And in practice though, the player needs at least one full media segment in its buffer to ensure minimum stability so that it can decode and display one while having the next one ready. In that workflow, we can easily see that the latency is bound to the segment duration. So in that case, I can already see you claim or wondering, but why not lower the segment length? So let's cover that hypothesis. Taking that approach would be a little too simplistic. It is more interesting and there are more advantages to keeping longer segments. So there are two reasons for that. One is to preserve the quality of the video, and the second is to limit the frequency of HTTP GET requests. In this section, we're going to demonstrate these two reasons. But before we do so, I'd like to share a quick disclaimer so the viewer won't take the information we are presenting at face value. So in order to highlight the most relevant information, the animations you're going to see show a highly simplified representation of an encoded video stream. So we will use four frames per second, along with an overly simplified GOP structure that contains regularly spaced B and P frames. So we have a six second segment, counting for a total of 28 frames at four frames per second. This segment starts with an IDR frame, which usually takes four to five times more bits to encode than a predictive which takes four to five times more bits than bidirectional. So now let's say this segment is 600 kilobytes long, 600 kilobytes over six seconds leads to a bitrate of 800 kilobit per second. Now let's say that we decide to lower the latency by lowering the segment duration to let's say one second. Instead of a single segment lasting six seconds, we now need to insert one IDR frame every second. But since these IDR frames are much larger in size compared to the other frames, the result is having the whole segment largely increase in size despite remaining the same duration, 6 seconds. Ultimately, a larger size of the same duration leads to an increased bitrate of around 1.8 megabit per second instead of the original 800 kilobit per second. However, to fairly be able to compare these two alternatives, we need to maintain the bitrate equal and align it to 800 kilobit per second. In other words, we will need to apply a stronger compression on all the pictures, including the intracodec picture, such as the RDR frame, ultimately reducing the quality of the video. The second aspect is the number of HTTP requests. We have one GET request for every six second segment. But when we reduce the segment size to one second, we will still have one HTTP request per segment. So for the same time frame or duration of six seconds, we have six times more GET requests. So this actually has an impact on traffic and the CDN cache table. 